was curious, where's the difficulty in preparing for a Jets offense that features a lot of new players from last season, especially since, I mean, there's no, there's no preseason tape of how these guys might be used. There's no, there's no tape at all, really. You can – actually, I don't want to tell you what you're going on. I, I want to hear it from you. Right. No, it's a, it's a challenge. It's like you mentioned, you know, not having a preseason tape to look at some of the guys and how they would fit in their, in their offense, uh, in the Jets' offense. So you have to kind of project and surmise, uh, you know, how they might be used. And probably what you have to be able to do is adjust during the course of the game because – you're not going to be 100% right. I mean, these are just projections and guesses, you know, from talking to scouts or uh, just hearing information. So it's going to be a little bit of cat and mouse as we get started. And kind of going off of that, uh, where are you – how are you feeling about your current situation at, at cornerback? We spoke with Sean a, a little bit about it yesterday, but you haven't had a lot of time with both Levi and Josh healthy in pads together on that field. So do you feel like – You've been you and your staff have been properly able to evaluate what you've got at the position given the time you've had. Yeah, you would have liked to have had Josh throughout this abbreviated uh, training camp, uh, but circumstances didn't allow it. Uh, but the fact that we have those guys working this week that helps a lot. Uh, so you know they're both pros. Uh, they had success in this league, it's Josh, over a long period of time. So uh, you know, we feel pretty good about it. We should be all right. All right, Ed. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. There's plenty of social justice initiatives that we'll see this year uh, rolling out week one for the NFL, partnering with Inspire Change, one of their programs. And one of the things that we'll see is plenty of helmet decals as well as hat decals that coaches can wear. Wanted to know if you'll be wearing a decal and what it will say. Yeah, uh, I'm going to wear a social justice decal, um, still working through what it's going to say. But yeah, uh, I am going to wear one of the decals and uh, hopefully it'll help make a difference, a positive difference. Yeah, just your thoughts on how the NFL is going to be able to focus on uh, decals on, on helmets, the writing that we'll see in the end zones that says it takes all of us and stop hate, as well as uh, networks focusing on storytelling each game. Yeah, I applaud uh, the NFL for taking the stance that they are. I mean, there's no uh, sport bigger than the National Football League uh, in our country. So for the NFL to take a stance, a positive stance, uh, to affect change, it speaks volumes uh, to our country and definitely supports our players. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we can make a difference in, a, in, in some way, positive way, uh, in affecting change when it comes to uh, how people are treated uh, in life in general. But uh, I think it's really, really good what the league is trying to get accomplished. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome, man. Hey, Leslie, John Scott. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Uh, I wanted to ask you once again about someone on the offensive side of the ball. I know you've schemed against Stephon Diggs before, but now that you've seen him daily go against your units, yeah. has anything surprised you or, or you learned anything new about him since he's come and, and practiced against you now? Well, you know, he's, I've always respected his game from afar. And as you mentioned, we did have to you know, coach, coach against him. And he, uh, his competitive desire, I mean, it's, off the charts, the way he competes every single snap. Knew he was a talented guy, I and mean, that stands out for sure. But the competitiveness, the, the desire to be the best, it's uh, that's probably what separates him from a lot of guys. He works his tail off, and he competes on every single snap, whether it's a hitch route or go route, whatever it is. I mean, he's competing, uh, and he wants to win. So it's a great combination when you when you got his talent. I know those of us who've been able to watch practice have really been drawn in those few times we've seen him and Tredavious go against each other. We even saw, you know, a funny interaction when he – yesterday during one-on-one uh, -on -one drills. How has his competitiveness and, and his skill level helped your defensive backs? I would think uh, for Trey or any of our guys to go against a receiver of that caliber, it, you know, only prepares you uh, better for the season because – you're not going to find many that are, that are better at what they do than Stefan. So it should help improve your game and really 
expose some things that you think you might know that you find out that you might need to work on because of his talent level. So it can only help you to go against a guy like that day in and day out. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome, Jim. Hey, Coach, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, Two-part question here. I'm just curious as to your assessment of how the pre-snap communication is going amongst your defensive linemen, knowing the turnover in terms of players that you've had up there. How smooth would you say that has been through the course of training camp? And then second part of that is I know Harrison kind of took on a role for you last year of calling some of those pass rush games. Will it be him again? And is there anybody else in the mix to have that responsibility at times? Yeah. Well, that's a good question regarding communication. I mean, it's been a process, uh, you know, coming off the Zoom calls and then getting into training camp and introducing ourselves to one another for the first time. So there were a lot of little things to work through from a chemistry standpoint, which includes uh, communication. And, you know, I think we're in pretty good shape in that area. Uh, you really don't know until you get into some game action, how the communication is going to be. Practice is so different from games. Uh, but we think we're on track. Uh, Harry's role uh, has evolved a little bit. Uh, you know, the fact that he's coming off the ACL, we gradually brought him along. But what that has allowed is for other guys to step up and help us with some of the things we want to do when it comes to communicating our, our games. But our new D-line coach, Eric Washington, does a great job of equipping all of our guys to be able to handle that and not rely on one person. So. Uh, it's a little bit different approach than what we've had in the past, and I think that's going to bode well for us uh, down the line. Great. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, Matt Perino here. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, – how are you? Uh, Sam Darnold. And, you know, you guys have gotten uh, multiple looks at him now in his two years in the league. Uh, obviously, the expectation is all of these third-year quarterbacks probably take a step forward this year. What, is, what have you seen that he's done well, and what do you guys have to uh, do to, to contain him on Sunday? Yeah, I just look back, Matt, to our first year playing against him and, and watching tape on him and just how much he's grown uh, as a player. He has – he really seems to feel confident in, in this current offense system that he'll be in now for the second year in a row. And uh, you can see it last season, his maturation over the course of the season, a lot more calmer, a lot more poised. Uh, played with a lot, lot more confidence uh, later in the season than he did early in the season, and uh, I'm sure that had something to do with being comfortable in that offense. So, a lot of growth. Uh, a guy with really good mobility, uh, good arm strength, and seems to be a smart quarterback as well. So he'll present some challenges for us for sure. And secondly, um, bit of a surprise last week on the outside, but not so much inside. Del Delshawn Phillips. Uh, that's a pretty cool story. Uh, what were your impressions of him in training camp and what he's been able to do to earn that spot? Yeah, you know, we had a chance to do Dalshon last season. We picked him up and he was on our practice squad. And so we'd see him in practice, had him in the meeting. So you got a feel for him. And then we came back and started this training camp and, and throughout the off season working on Zoom, you could see that his knowledge of the defense was there. It was a matter of how we perform on the field. Because in the, in, when we had him last fall, he was working off of cards all the time, you know, being a practice squad guy. So to see him grasp our defense and then go out and perform the way he did in training camp, he earned this spot. I mean, he, he, he worked extremely hard, uh, played very, very well for us, uh, and he's going to be an asset on special teams. And that was probably the, the separator when it came to making our club. And uh, he's done a terrific job and needs to be congratulated. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome, Matt. Hey, Leslie, it's Sal. Good to see you. What's say, Sal? Football's here, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Great. Yes. It's fun. It's fun. Um, AJ, he walks into a defensive end room with 27 years of experience in front of him, basically. Mm -hmm. But he's also, you know, a pretty highly regarded draft pick, obviously. Um, I'm sure you'd like to get some production out of him, see him on the field this year. It's going to be a, a situation where, you know, you're going to have to pick and choose when you use him. But just tell us a little bit about what you've seen from him through training camp and you know, how he's fit in with such a veteran roster at his position. Yeah, so we have seen tremendous growth uh, with AJ from when we opened training camp with the rookies until today. I mean, I just told him yesterday in the stretch line, I said, man, just so proud of the way he has progressed because it's hard for those rookies, uh, all rookies in our league this year with not having an off season of any sorts. 
to come into a training camp with the veterans that we have and try to find your way and get acclimated to pro football when the game is so much faster than college football. It took him a, a moment to adjust, but you can see uh, him going through that process and slowly but gradually improving along the way to the point where now he's more of a part of the conversation, how we can use him in games. And, and it, so it's, it, our conversations about him have gone in a totally different direction because of his uh, increased confidence and the more experience that he's gotten within our system and, and how we do things. Uh, really pleased with his progress. Always appreciate, appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. Hey, Mookie, you're up, man. Or not. We're Mike Catalano. Hey, uh, Leslie, Mike Catalano in Rochester. Um, hey, Mike. In your years, player, coach, I don't know what your normal habits are when there's a football game on. You watch all the tape. You're so locked into what you're doing. Will you watch tonight? to see it come back and what it looks like, even to take a peek at it? Like, wh what is your interest and in idea of what am I looking at now, even though they're going to have some fans in the stands in Kansas City? Well, Mike, you know, it's what you, what you said is just so, it's so true. It's just everything's so different now. So I do want to get a, an idea of what it's going to be like uh, for uh, the game tonight with just a sparse group of fans there just to see how the coaches – handle it, uh, see how the players handle it. So I do want to watch some of it. I probably won't watch all of it just to get a feel for what the atmosphere is like. That's the big question we all have as we talk throughout this week, you know, what, is kind of, what kind of effect it will have on our players not having the energy of our home fans uh, available. So uh, I'm curious to see what that will look like a little bit uh, this evening. And, and in, somebody who's been in the league for so long, and the doubts that maybe we would get to this point, is it, I don't know, put words in your mouth, but is it a sort of a sense of pride to see the league come back on time and ready to go tonight? Yeah, myself and some of the coaches were talking about that. It's, I mean, this all season, we were all questioning whether or not we'd be where we are now. And you know, there were so many rumors swirling about whether that would even, even be a season. So to be at this point on the verge of kicking off the 2020 season, it's like a, a sour relief, you know, you just can't wait. You're chomping at the bit to get out there and kick it off. And I think we're all excited and anticipating uh, getting out there with, because of all the doubts and frustrations that were going on leading up to this point. Uh, so there's a sense of uh, excitement, a little bit of nervousness because of the unknown, uh, but we're all looking forward to the experience. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Coach, good morning. Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Can you hear me this time? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Um, um, you know, being this with this with this this training camp this season and no preseason and you know not the opportunity to go against other guys. Uh, how impressed were you with this uh, with your defense this far in training camp? Yeah, you know our guys have really come along and you know gradually gotten better and better as we've we've been through this process. It was just so different than the way we started by not having. Uh, and all season, like you mentioned, and to jump into it the way we did. I mean, you started with all these walkthrough practices and training camp, and then you go like, is this really training camp? Because usually, you know, you're, you're getting at, after it pretty soon, and we couldn't do that. I mean, that acclimation period that you had to go through for a couple of weeks, and, and then finally you put the pads on. So it's just been so different. But I think our guys have handled it extremely well, and we're on track uh, about where we thought we should be at this point. Now, uh, you know, with your tutelage and knowledge, um, how do you stop at Adam Gase's offense? Yeah, I mean, he's done a terrific job uh, as a play caller, and uh, he does a really good job of keeping you off balance with some of the things he does. So uh, he'll present some challenges, especially in this environment when you don't have any preseason tape to look at and get a feel for what direction they want to go. Uh, but he's an excellent play caller, so we'll have to adjust as the game goes on. Yes, sir. Good luck to Sunday. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, uh, good morning, co Coach. George Redney, Challenger Community News. Uh, morning, and, George. Uh, hope all is well. And my question for you is, do you think, how big is tackling going to be Sunday? Do you think, are you, do you have concerns about guys wrapping up and being able to wrap up since they really haven't done a lot of that during uh, uh, training camp? 
Man, George, I tell you, that's a big one now. That's, that's something we've been emphasizing for the reason you just mentioned. You, 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 you had these controlled scrimmages in, in training camp uh, as opposed to preseason games where you could let guys go and, and, and find out what they could do in, in live situations when it comes to tackling. And so we, uh, Coach McDermott has had us working tackling drills throughout training camp. But you really, you know, you can't take guys to the ground. You know, you have to be careful about that. Uh, but we work a lot of the fundamentals of tackling, you know, where we place our feet, where our eyes are, what are we doing with our hands, you know, our bodies. So we tried our best to simulate tackling, uh, but that's the big unknown. You know, how well will we tackle all of a sudden? It's hard to play good defense without doing that. Even in years where we've had preseason games, we've seen that be a, a, an Achilles heel for uh, some teams when they open the season, uh, just because of the way training camp goes today. So that's the big question mark for us. You know, we, we, we're preaching it, we're talking about it. Now you got to go out and do it. Yeah. Why do? Why is tackling become a lost art? It, it doesn't seem to be as good as it was in the seventies. I go back to the seventies and eighties, and guys always, if they did anything, they tackled. They sure didn't know how to tackle in those days. And why, well, why you got lost I, art. I, I think George, uh, you go back to what you just described. You have more live situations then. You know, you weren't as concerned about the injuries like you are now. Uh, some of these guys, man, you just can't afford to lose them. And the depth is so thin today. You have very few live reps compared to the 70s and 80s. Or because yeah, I, I was like you, you know, I played in the 80s and, and we had live practices a lot in training camp. Taking them to the ground. Everybody with Walter Payton, you couldn't take Walter to the ground. <laughs> you could hit everybody else though. But right. so, but, but that's not like that today. I mean, it's it's a it's a fine line to you know have having live practices. Uh, completely completely different in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, and also last question for you with, with rotation is rotation going to be heavily important just to make sure guys are are, are not uh, subject to injury since they since you're going to have to have some type of serious rotation going there to keep guys. Uh, uh, stamina there going? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to be mindful of that. Uh, you know, we've talked about that with our players and, and, and staff as well. Just, you know, if a guy gets fatigued, you know, don't be ashamed to tap your hat, let us know so we can get someone in there. Uh, but we're going to be mindful of trying to keep a good rotation going, uh, knowing that the lead up to this season has been so different than other years in preparation for the season. So, yeah, we have to be conscious of having a, a solid rotation and, and having some depth to, to put guys in, in the right positions.